Good evening. The following is a ride share experience. I enjoy doing these just for the conversation. I always allow the rider to speak first as much as possible. I will sometimes have to mention what's going on with the vehicle prior to them noticing. Let's see how long it takes for this gentleman to notice that my car is driving itself. So thankfully he has put his seatbelt on, but his phone immediately goes up. All dialed in. Getting all set. So you always have to put the address in so you can turn it on. Not really so that you can turn it on, but so that the car knows where it's going. So from here, beta is enabled and the car is doing everything all on its own. So I put my phone down in the center console and I proceed to let the car do its thing. It looks like I'm steering manually. I'm kind of... How are you this evening? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Kind of faking it a little bit, uh, just for assurance, because I, I haven't told him anything. Again, I'm kind of waiting for him to observe and maybe ask a question, because as you can see, my foot is far away from the accelerator and the brake pedal. Sometimes when I do these drives, I'll illuminate, I'll put a light down there so the driver, or the rider, excuse me, can see that I'm not doing anything. Most riders actually have zero interest in self-driving technology, and they just sit there and use their phone for the whole ride. I don't usually bring it up in those cases, but this guy has some good questions coming up, so check it out. So this car is driving all by itself. This is the full self-driving beta software. And this is one of the most difficult maneuvers it can possibly do is an unprotected left uh -huh. at a stop sign with no traffic light. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So I am ready to take over. Obviously, I'm in control of the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you can see here it's showing the creep zone. So it's, it's going to go out there basically and oh, wow. stop in the middle. That's so cool. Yeah, my uh, father-in-law is a Tesla, but he doesn't have the, the package with the... The self-driving? Yeah. Ah, gotcha. So, yeah, I've, all, I've been in a couple times. It's crazy. Well, that's awesome. So here it's going. Wow, even with that car there. Yeah. <laughs> they did honk at me, but... Uh, I probably would have done that if I were driving yeah. myself, to be honest with you. What I meant there is that I would have gone out and done the same thing they would have honked at me if i was driving manually that's what i was trying to say the crazy thing is when you test it down in the city that's when it gets really crazy yeah i can imagine a lot of traffic and a lot of variety down there <laughs> So this is very typical. The the rider will kind of zone out on their phone. And like I, I mentioned before, I mean, I'm not like criticizing him, but he actually brings his phone up. I think he's taking a short video. He's impressed, he's interested. A lot of people are genuinely curious, but they're just quiet in nature. And they, I, I don't know, for some reason, a lot of people just don't know what questions to ask or they, um, in a lot of cases, to be completely honest with you, they're just not interested which blows my mind. If I ever got in a car that was driving itself, I would be wanting to watch and observe everything and I'd have tons of questions. This was filmed during the peak of the smog that was coming down from the wildfires in Canada. So you'll see the uh, smog is pretty intense here today. This gentleman asks a question about Smart Summon. I uh, misspeak and say that it was coming in three weeks. It's actually coming in like two to three months. And you can also like summon it from like a parking spot, can't you? Like if you like are leaving a grocery store or something or just a storefront or? Yes, you can. It's called Smart Summon uh -huh. and it has a 200 foot radius. Okay. And you just use your phone and you hit the come to me button uh -huh. and it will come pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a party trick because it's it doesn't work you know very well all yeah. the time sometimes it works really well but other times it will screw up and you know when nobody's in the vehicle mm -hmm. and you're kind of like controlling it from your phone it can get really awkward yeah so you know someone honking and you know no one's in the car <laughs> so you can't get out of the way really <coughs> so a lot of times you have to either run out to go grab it or <laughs> basically that's it yeah, wow. <laughs> it's just embarrassing <laughs> But they're improving it. So Elon Musk tweeted just last week that the actually smart summon, which is abbreviated ASS, 
<laughs> is coming out in the middle of August, is what he said. Or actually, middle of July. So next month, he was saying three weeks. He said that last week. But he his timelines are always way off. Yeah. So <laughs> probably won't come out until August or September. It, and it's set to like not go like more than five miles over the speed limit, it looks like. Or like it shows the speed limit 40 on there and then max. 20. Oh, yeah. There's a setting you can do as an offset. So okay. I have it set for 13% to go above the speed limit. Okay. Because nobody goes the speed limit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was wondering, like, if you're on the highway, like, you know, you're, if it's driving, like, the center lane going, like, you know, 65 or something, cars are flying by at 80 or something, I know, like, you can set it go, like, 80 to whatever. Right. Yes, you can change it. So if I wanted to bump it up, yeah. this scroll wheel here, I just go like this so I can go oh, up to 50 wow. or however fast yeah. I want to go. Yeah, so this is a 2019 car, and the screen is still, like, super snappy. And yeah, that's so cool. You can zoom in. So there's a person. Like, I uh, yeah. wouldn't even know they're there until I saw them on the screen. That's kind of the cool part. So, like, for a blind spot, yeah. like rather than getting a little uh, indicator on your mirror, mm -hmm. you I just look at the screen, and I, you can see, like, everybody around you. Yeah, I like how it even, it's even, like, accurate. Like, if there's a truck or, like, it's a bigger vehicle, like... I know uh, I'm a UPS driver. Oh, and I cool. know like when I pull up alongside a Tesla, it you know, shows like a bigger truck. Like, oh, and that's the, and cool. And they're on their approaching their vehicle. <laughs> oh, because you screen. can look yeah, down. Yeah, because I can like. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> get a bird's eye view. And it's just like it just always amuses me how accurate it is. Right. <clears throat> that's crazy. That it even picks up like the vehicles who are like waiting to turn like up at the. Oh yeah, yeah. It's amazing how far. Yeah, it can like see. how far. Yeah. The, the view mm -hmm. it's all vision based so there's three cameras up front and there's two on the sides in the front and then there's two on the pillars yeah so that's three four five six seven and then one in the back you can pull up the back one by pushing that button there wow. these are looking at the lines yeah. so that's how it stays centered what happens if you like a are driving on a road where the, the line markers aren't like you know defined that well or maybe you know aren't <laughs> right yeah sometimes it actually that's been worked out really well now it almost never has issues it surprises me actually how well it works especially mm -hmm. in construction zones yeah like where they're shifting lines constantly or right like just kind right. of a makeshift lane it will ask you to pay attention more frequently uh-huh like it's constantly looking for feedback on the steering wheel. And then there's a camera up here that's monitoring my eyes at all times. Okay. So it requires you to be attentive. Uh -huh. But rather than like line discrepancies, the bigger issues right now are merging on highways. If, if it has like a big runway, that basically where the lane that's going to merge has a it, it goes on for uh -huh. a while it won't get over it won't merge until the very oh, end yeah. like the line forces it in and a lot of people are calling that a zipper merge yeah so that's a little bit of a problem because if if there's heavy traffic the line it the line actually like forces the car in even if there's a car in the way <laughs> yeah it's kind of annoying Feet, turn left onto National Parkway. So it looks like. Now tell me, can I turn left here, or do I need to do a U-turn? You know, I'm not even sure. I'm picking up a vehicle for my in-laws oh, okay. at, the, at the Chevy dealer, and I don't know. You might be able to, like, just might be a median. Like, yeah, it looks like I can go around inside of there. Possibly. Play it safe and take this route. Yeah, there's kind of now a... Now turn left onto National Parkway. Find out here. Because it's interesting, the Uber app is saying that I can do a U-turn, but the Tesla navigation, which is Google Maps, is telling me to come around this way. Huh. 
Was that the vehicle? Yeah, it was a little bit has it didn't know what to do With there. The bike lane, yeah. <laughs> Turn right onto Remington Road. There, now we're lining up here. The app and the apps. now turn right onto Remington Road. Would it stay in like this? Like, if there was a bicycle, like somebody just kind of bicycling down the side here, do you know if it would like cut him off or would it like kind of stay in the center lane? You know, because it's like right there was a little tricky with a, a right turn with a bicycle lane, like right on top. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, you, usually it's overly cautious uh -huh. around cyclists, so it would definitely wait. There have been times where it will like start to go, even though it sees it, because mm -hmm. it detects that it's in not a threat or not in the way. Mm -hmm. It surprised me once or twice, but generally speaking, like ninety-eight percent of the time, it, it nails it. So overly cautious. So it's gonna go in there. Interesting. Yeah, but you may notice like all the cameras and stuff set up in here. So I have an HDMI output from my screen. So I'm capturing the feedback here. I, I'm a content creator. Mm -hmm. So I have a YouTube channel, Tech Geek Tesla, and I've been posting videos since 2021 when I first got the software. And uh, Elon Musk caught wind of my channel, I think. He replied to three of my tweets and added me into the original group of testers. Oh, wow. So I get their software releases before a lot of the other people. Very cool. I was down in the city with this 11.4.4 last Friday, kind of documenting how well it had progressed. And that's the goal of my channel, is to see how it's progressing over time. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, it made a lot of mistakes uh, same, same as before. I haven't noticed any significant improvement recently. But over time, I'm, I'm confident that it, it'll get better. It's already like that unprotected left we did yeah. starting out. When I first got it in 2021, it never would have been able to do that. <laughs> That's one of the cool things about owning a Tesla is that it gets better over time. So when you park your car in your garage, it connects over Wi-Fi and it will push a new version to your vehicle. It will notify you that it's available, download, and then you can install it, initiate the installation procedure directly from your phone. It's a pretty neat process. So you can see the pollution here. It's pretty bad. Look at that building up there. It comes and goes with the haze. But uh, we're rounding out the trip here. I do have to intervene to get through this intersection, but I just want to say really quickly, thank you so much for watching my videos and thank you for all of your support. Get my green light, go. <laughs> These are times where you have to intervene. So it, by stepping on the accelerator, that's an intervention. Yeah. Now Interesting, it right. didn't just go up to Gulf Road and turn left. Yeah, I didn't know if this median it would let you. Uh, maybe that's why. So your support, by the way, service entrance, I think that's what I want, is subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much for everything. Have a great one. Cool, thank you so much. This All right, very informative and very cool. <laughs> Have a great one. You too. To get out, how do I? So you push that button, on that. yep, and then push out with your elbow. There you go. Awesome. Have a good one. Thank you. That was a cool interaction. He was very uh, curious and, you know, asked some great questions. So I had, a, I had a fun time on that trip. Really enjoyed doing these.